I'd like to show you how you can take 360 footage, edit in Premiere Pro, and add special effects using After Effects. In this example, I have some footage of the New York City Oculus, and I've went ahead and marked in, marked out that clip. I'm going to take this footage and drag it onto the new item icon to create a new sequence. Got my footage here, but it's showing this equirectangular uh, monoscopic view. I want to see the VR view. In order to do that, there's a VR button down here that I can turn on. If you don't see your button, you can hit the button editor in the interface and you can just drag that down into your controls. Now it looks kind of small, a little thumbnail. You can click on the little wrench, go to VR video. You can disable the controls, it gives you a little more real estate. And then you can also go back to settings and bring the monitor view horizontal to 180 degrees. And now you got a nice view. I want to go ahead and remove this tripod eventually, but for now, a time saver is just to throw a logo out there. And there's a logo, but I want to move it down to the bottom. So I need to go to my effects and I can do a search for VR and I'll see lots of different effects that I have in here, including third party effects. The effect I'm looking for is VR plane to sphere. I can take this effect and throw it on the logo and then go to my effect controls. In here, I have rotate projection. I can use the Y axis to move this up and down, left and right and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and bring that back. But if I bring this down, I want to move it uh, specifically down to 90 degrees. So I can just type in 90, matches perfectly there. If you want to scale this logo, scale using this part of the effect. Don't scale using your regular motion controls because it may add distortion and makes your image more difficult to work with. So that looks pretty good there. Now, separately, let's say, for example, I want to go ahead and paint this out using, say, After Effects. To do that, I need to send it to After Effects. So I'm going to right click on this and choose Replace with After Effects Composition. If you don't have After Effects already launched, it's going to launch After Effects. It's going to run a server in the background called Adobe Dynamic Link Server, and then it's going to start. It may take a little while. I already have After Effects loaded because I was working on something else, and so it shows up in here. Now, you don't have a VR button in here like you do in Premiere Pro, so you have to use another tool. In fact, specifically, there's a tool in here called the VR Comp Editor. If I push this button there, I see I have the VR Comp Editor control show up in here. 2D edits and 3D edits. 2D edits are for the edits that we're about to do. 3D edits have to do with 3D camera tracking or if you're working with 3D graphics and such. I can press Add 2D Edit. Make sure you choose the right composition and hit Add 2D Edit. This creates a new composition called Edit and a new composition called Output. Output is what we rendered. Output is what I need in Premiere Pro. This is the original link clip that I brought in from Premiere Pro. So I want to work on this clip right here. To see the controls, I can just hit my camera, Unified Camera Tool. I can hit letter, letter C, and now I see these controls here for my 3D camera and I can look down at the bottom of the tripod. From here, I can come and grab the clone stamp tool and I can double click on this image to get inside of the layer. And now I can hit my Alt key to sample a region. I can make my brush bigger holding the control or command key on the Mac. And then I can just paint this out. Uh, good enough. From here, I wanna go back to my composition and you can see it's still gone. Don't hit the letter C and start moving around your shot again because you're gonna see your paint uh, of the clone stamping is going to show up on your footage. That's not what we want to do, so I just undid that. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my output here, and I can see that it's been painted out. But in my original link clip, it's still in here. So I'm going to save this project. If I go back to Premiere Pro, I'll see that it's still there because this is using the original linked footage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this with a different clip that's inside of After Effects. So to do that, I can just double click to import. I'm going to import that composition that I was just working on. And in here, I can open up this folder that was uh, created by the VR Comp Editor and choose the output. Don't choose the edit, but choose the output. That's the file we want. And there it is. I can now take this clip here, maybe all the edits I might have in my project, right click and choose replace with clip from bin or source monitor, in this case from my bin, and you'll see that it's been replaced. Now this is dynamic link footage, so you are going to get a red bar and it's going to take some more horsepower. But assuming you have the right system, uh, it'll run nicely and you don't have to render to the very end. I'd like to add some titles here in Premiere Pro to this video. So I can go to the graphics workspace, and from here, 
I can hit letter T. But as I click in here, nothing happens. And that's because I need to turn off the VR video display. And now when I click, I get a red little box here, and I can type something in here. The controls here for editing this text are as usual. If I turn my VR view again, you'll see that the text is is uh, kind of following the sphere, which you may like that. But if you don't like that, then you need to go back into your effects and you can add a VR plane to sphere effect again, and that will make it look flat in your scene. Again, if you want to scale this, I recommend using the VR plane to sphere effect, which is right here now. And I could open up this projection and move it to a different part of the footage, or I can scale it and so forth, and it'll look really nice. You can do lots of different titles here in Premiere Pro, but sometimes you might want to do something a little fancier. So in this case, uh, what I did is I made something inside of After Effects. I made this title in After Effects and it has this uh, trim paths effect and then just a linear wipe. It looks kind of cool, I think. So I want to bring this NYC Oculus title into Premiere Pro. Now one way would be just to render this out and bring it in. But if I want more flexibility, I can use a, a dynamic link. So to do that, I can just double click to import and I can bring that AE Titles project in again and from here I can choose the composition that I want to work with and there's this little clip. I'm going to go ahead and bring this out into my timeline and now I have this in here and it looks weird. <laughs> again it's not using, it doesn't have any VR effect on it so it's following the sphere. I can add the VR plane to sphere effect again and now it looks normal. I can go to my effect controls as I've done earlier and I can scale this up. If I want to move this, I can open up the rotate projection and I can move this up and down. I can move this side to side. I could also rotate the sphere itself. So if I want to do some kind of animation, I could continue animating this right here within the interface. One of the troubles with adding dynamic link content to your Premiere Pro project is that you get the red bar and things get really heavy and as you start adding coloring and other effects transitions it almost becomes impossible to work inside the program especially if you're using really high res 360 footage you could change the resolution here but sometimes it's still not enough my recommendation would be to take certain clips and render them right here in your timeline so in this example I could take this clip I could go to sequence and I could choose render selection and that's going to render out this clip here this is going to take a little while to render, but now this will play in more real time. And when this is done, this will play really fast and I'll get a green bar. As it gets to the red, of course, it'll get slower. Another option would be to hit letter I on my keyboard and come to a different part on my timeline and hit letter O. And then I can choose sequence, render into out, or just hit my return key on my keyboard. And that will render out that section and play that back real time. The great thing about this is that since this is still a dynamic link clip, I can still come over here to After Effects and adjust this footage and not have to re-render. I can save my After Effects file, come back to Premiere Pro, and I can see that that change has been made immediately. And there you have it.